Okay, so I was going to explain a little about how I, th I see these things. So, what the first thing to, to think about is that we have certain, we have a, an, uh, an event. We have a different uh, actors, different um, points from which there are things going on. And the, the, the traditional way of seeing this is that we have um, this uh, frame of the interaction, which is where the event takes place. And um, we have different uh, patterns that are possible, right? Different things that are going on behind uh, that are, that can be activated according to the situation. So, um, and um, this is, um, what then goes on, what happens then is that this um, event will take place and uh, something like this is going on. And what we do then is to take our field notes. So we're going to observe, we're there, we're watching it. And uh, we put uh, words on it. So let's say that uh, this is interesting because of that. This is a concept. I think we see the same kind of thing here. Um, this place could be described with this concept. And I think also that this is similar to that. Now what happens here is interesting because, um, because of this concept. Um, it is uh, comparable to that concept, so we might group them. Um, what then happens is that we uh, we see other places. This is also relevant because of that and uh, this and these two are similar in some sense, so we group them. So we build up a hierarchy of, of concepts and now we put a super another concept on top of this and uh, combine and then we can group these and so on. We have more groups over here. And in, in the end, we find, we come up with a thesis, a theory, um, which can uh, kind of describe what's going on here. So uh, another way to approach a, um, to document what's going on. So now I always think taking this uh, analysis by words or by concepts, but what we can do is to take, do a video or, or tape recording so what we will do is to break uh, the event up into small chunks that um, are that had the same distance in time, so they are equidistant. And if we have video and other kinds of measurements, we also have the same kind of logic when it comes to space. But let's stick to um, audio recording. And what we see is that there is a linearity in this in the sense that um, what happens here is uh, represented it's, ch it's bitten up into small chunks that are um, we put the same distance behind it uh, this, uh, the equidistant distance between them so uh, what happens when we uh, take this analysis? Does it represent what's going on? No, because what we have decided in this uh, uh, approach is to say that there are different possible patterns. So the actual unfolding of the situation is only an arbitrary rendering of patterns. So basically what it says is that we could have had the same situation, but with different uh, outcome. And it would have been a comparable situation. What the, the audio recording suggests to us is that the way the event unfold, unfolded is, is what is interesting for the analysis. So how do we do to, to get uh, rid of this uh, logic? Now, first of all, um, 
there is a problem or a different kind of way to see these things about what is going on behind the scene, so to speak. This is, if this is a scene, then you have a behind. And um, what if we think about this differently? So what we're going to do is to say what has been going on behind the scene are other scenes, are other things going on, other going ons uh, in a straight uh, and unbroken line which doesn't ever, uh, you cannot uh, on, uh, go backwards for that line. And there you have our event. And therefore uh, what I need now is um, a time perspective in a different way. So what we have now are, uh, let's say that these are two actors and they are interacting in some way. They are entering into the same space at the same time. And we see that they are unfolding in time. And their interaction is um, depending on factors such as what is the other one doing now. So what I'm getting at here is that um, instead of thinking about behind the, the structures behind that are possibly going to uh, create an outcome according to different kinds of logics, we get rid of these. And what you end up with is an ontology of movement and of lines, just like uh, Tim and Gold is talking about. And the problem is how to understand what's going on in a, an event when we are uh, thinking about the event as an unfolding of life and that you can't go backwards. So the, the, the tape recording gives us the impression that we can break things up into pieces and, and, and take a look at them. And, and this is actually uh, the same kind of idea that is behind uh, uh, statistics and so on, that you can break life up into different... So, what uh, should be apparent by now is that there is a similarity between these two kinds of logics. So the logic where you have um, your uh, event and you break it up according to concepts that can then be broken down into some over concepts and then finally at the top uh, arrive at a, some kind of, of uh, conclusion or totality of the event. Now um, when we take the uh, mathematical approach, we also have a similar kind of synthesis. But the difference is that when you use the word, uh, the logic of the language, you get rid of time and space. You get rid of these real life uh, forms that are existing which can be an interesting thing because of course we know that this situation will never repeat the same way but still we need to understand how situations are unfolding what is some kind of uh, pattern that makes these things happen because there are many things going on we need to understand how to be prepared for similar situations etc etc so what the analysis using concept is doing is to get rid of time and space and say that these are patterns that are uh, relevant for a given situation um, that might unfold in a similar fashion. When we go to the mathematical approach we can see that we, um, we um, infer a certain idea about time into this and this is time understood as linear and mechanical. Time is understood as something which can be broken down into 
equidistant units. You could say the same about space. We want to understand our world according to coordinates, right? So, and we also break it up into equidistant um, units. Um, the thing about lived experience is that each moment of an experience doesn't have the same weight. So let's say we want to break this interaction up into these little chunks. And we have our... Um, we can do an analysis of the different parameters, like how, which pitch is that, uh, how much volume does it have, etc. But the thing is that in real life, uh, things are not experienced in this manner. So we might have what seems to be a very um, um, an event which doesn't have much interest when we analyze it as with these given parameters, so, but in real life it might be experienced differently. Maybe this one little event is what will count when these actors are moving on to their and following their lifeline in the next uh, event. So, and not that one. So maybe this event was the one that we would have found was giving most a significance according to our measurements, our instrument of measurements. But in actual life, this one, small, tiny, uh, apparently uh, without any meaning event, was the one that would be uh, giving meaning to further developments in, in, in life. So what we're getting at here is that we kind of have two uh, different approaches. Normally we would put this into humanities and we would put this into natural sciences. So um, these are our tools to understand what's going on in the world. And there is, a, of course, many combinations like uh, conversational analysis. This is a means of analyzing human speech and interaction using um, tools that have been derived from natural sciences. And um, these are possible bridges. What I'm going to talk about now is, is there a third way? And what I'm thinking is that what we call art Is that a possible way to bridge some of these problems? So getting back to our event, we have um, some beings, some living forms, and we know that they had a history. They have been living. Now, oops, we have an event. And something's going on, let's see what happens. We have accelerations, we have static situations, we have interactions, and all kinds of patterns are unfolding. So what I'm talking about is that an approach through, let's take sound art as an example, could lead us to take different parts of this interaction, uh, this, this, this specific event, and uh, focus on them. Um, then, instead of uh, taking the linearity approach from our typical way of analyzing a sound recording. We would take um, this kind of approach where we build up 
a database of possible patterns. So these are patterns that we have detected. And um, now what you are seeing is a visual representation. But of course, you have to understand that this is vibrating life. These are living chunks that we have extracted. And in a uh, universe of sound art, this is what we call a loop. Now a loop is a figure, a, a small chunk of sound, which is going on repeating itself forever. So here we have a loop. Now uh, what we can do with sound art is to take a look at different parameters. What I've been trying to uh, show you here is um, these are forms that might be expressed through movement or sound. What we do is to convert these forms into a meter level where um, with which we can form other sounds. Right? So we have our, a movement, uh, a, a pattern of movement which is vibrating, it lives, it's there, it goes on and on. And then we also have a, a surf, surface layer which is the actual um, sounds, sound events that are going on. And we also, we're able to cherry pick in our material, we can go and say, okay, which kinds of sound events or, or actual uh, sound in the sense of timbre are interesting. So I would say, let's take um, this piece of sound and uh, that piece of sound there and this one. So we have a second bank of sound which is um, a bank of instruments. With, with, if this would be an orchestra, you would have instruments here and then you would have uh, melodies here, if you want to have it a simple way. But again, these are visual representations, but you have to understand what's going on here is vibrating. These are also loops. So you have two layers of loop. One layer, which is the form loop, and you don't hear it. You have another layer, which is the uh, actual sounding loop, which is what you would compare to an instrument. So what happens in the analysis, and uh, actually you might also compare this with the, the analysis through uh, concepts, because you can also talk about a kind of um, synthesis of levels. Since we have taken our samples of this event, we have grouped them according to different criteria. criteria. This, is, this is a, a level of analysis, a first level of analysis, right? Um, and um, we have two um, parts of this level. Um, so what can happen now is that we can say, okay, we can decide um, how to combine these different uh, samples. And um, this is like a, a wiring or, a, or an experimental level where you try to um, make different kinds of connections. So we might say these two go together, but also that one and this one. So what happens if we play out a situation with this combination, right? So here you have the instrument, the sound, it might be a or a piece of whatever kind of sound you choose. Uh, you might choose it from the actual event or you might uh, emulate uh, the kind of sound, if it's a noisy sound or whatever, 
These are the actual sounds you will hear. This is the way they're being formed. And um, this will unfold itself in different um, patterns that are have some kind of logic. It's not going to be um, looking like or sounding like the original event, the one we are analyzing. But what it does is that it takes different patterns from the event and then they it play it out. And what's happening here is interesting in the sense, I think, that what you have here is lived life. This is not a static uh, rendering of something. If you have a text, what would happen would be that you are locking these um, life lines into concepts. What happens in, in this rendering, this um, sound art um, rendering of the uh, elements from the event is that it vibrates, it lives. And what more is that, as you know, these are loops and these are loops and they also have their own time, their own logic in time. So when you combine the two, you would have loops that are being controlled by other loops. In this way, you would have maybe the loop that would have this duration and you would have another loop that would have that duration. And as you might know, let's express it through maths. If you have a loop that lasts just, let's say, for 823 milliseconds and you have another one which lasts for 819 milliseconds, right? Well, you would know that these two would never, uh, probably in our lifetime, uh, repeat the same kind of way. So, if you have a form in this uh, loop that goes like, there's two events, like tick, tick, and then in the other one you have a sound, which is not a stable sound, but simply small chunks of sound as well. You would see that sometimes this form would uh, bring out sound in this one and sometimes it wouldn't, according to, of course, arbitrarity, but also a chance, but it has logic. So it could go on forever and you would have a pattern, you could recognize a kind of logic to it, but you would never hear the same tw thing twice. And this is also what goes, goes on in life. You don't ever repeat the same thing twice. So actually what I'm trying to say is that this approach I'm, I'm working out is an approach where you um, emulate life in a way which is, from my perspective, an analysis. So, to wrap it up, now we had uh, three different kinds of logics that we are talking about how do they, how can we understand our world with these logics. And um, there is a um, thing going on, we have an event, we know that uh, before this event, many things has pa have gone on and have happened, and now we have our event. Let's make it simple this time. So, um, the uh, analysis using words is uh, working well when it comes to um, the idea of symbolic representations. Uh, because when we have our event, we might also uh, identify things that are going on that we can understand at a symbolical level, for example, words. So you have a word in this person's uh, history and now the word 
pops up in our um, event. But many things are also going on that are not words. So how can we do that? How can we understand these things? We can measure them. So we go our mathematical approach would say, okay, there are one, two, three behind this one, uh, going between these two, and there are four here. So we have three and four, right? So that makes it, um, uh, this is the result. Now, um, and our uh, analysis through words would say, well, we have this combination here, and, um, and not that one. So th this is our way of understanding it. And then I have my third uh, approach, which is the artistic approach. Let's call it that to simplify which says we have a dynamic oops yeah as i was saying we have a dynamic relationship here going on and we are taking this and creating a lived a live um, loop and we are using this as a way to understand our thing. Now, this is the artistic, I call it this to make it simple, analysis. And it goes on all the time. It's not only something that we do if we make improvisational art or uh, theater or dance. It's something that is present in people's lives all the time. And I was using sound art as an example. It might also have been choreography or improvisation, I would rather say. Because we could also render these um, dynamic forms as um, a corporeal movements. And then we would be able to combine them in different ways. Um, in a manner that corresponds to my sound art example. It might also become improvisational music according to the same principles. But I guess that this was what I had to say and I was happy that you took your time to listen and I hope you will also share your own ideas and all this and come back and uh, then we can see what happens, we can combine things and uh, do some, uh, expand our understanding of the world. Um, yeah, that's it.